You're probably wondering about the title of my talk, and can affract the blue icing. This is a video that's available on YouTube. Has anyone here seen it? I recommend you see it, because this is what your children are getting. This is uh, chocolate uh, cupcakes, and lots and lots and lots of icing. The blue, what does the blue represent? That's our water. And here, can you see a plastic tube? In the video, they show the plastic tube as the drill bit going down into the cake. These hands here, these fingers, there's one hand, uh, shows the casing protecting our drinking water aquifers. You know how they tell us, go home, don't worry about the water. We have these multi-layers of casing, and we're only fracking way below where your drinking water comes from. That's what this video is all about. This is a very, very young little girl. And look at her hand. I think this video is disgusting. The hand belongs to Mark Taylor, who does the video, and he's the same manager for Encana that told my community the very same bogus story, but we didn't get any cupcakes and no icing. I'm going to start with a little bit of history. In Saskatchewan, researchers looked at water wells and springs, almost a thousand of them, and they found increased methane, where there was increased energy holes. They also found uh, methane in some of the water. Most of the samples had less than 0.3 milligrams per liter methane. This is the historic records on my water well, 1986. You can't read it, but it says right here, gas present, no. My legal team retained a hydrogeologist and they looked at 2,300 such records within about 50 square kilometers around my water well, less than 0.2% had a gas that could have been methane noted on the records. Husky did a study on gas migration. This is industrial gas migration. This is gas migration caused by energy well bores. This is before they even start perforating because they have to explode little holes in the casing they say protects our water and this is before they do their hydraulic fracturing. They concluded, big problem, expensive to fix, and difficult to completely stop. Big oil does not like to spend money on us, water, our communities, our environment. I'd like you to think about this question. This presentation will be available for you online. When did the idea form? to take that big, expensive industry problem and blame nature. This quote is in the Husky study. Could some parts of the problem be attributable to natural sources, swamp gas? This is the biogenic gas. Here's the surface of the ground. This gas is shallow. This is the stuff that industry and our regulators and government are using to slam Josh Fox and Gasland to try to discredit the people with contaminated water in that film, also to discredit me. And they claim that that's natural. Well, the deep gas that they target, that's the thermogenic gas, that's natural too. All natural gas is natural. Man doesn't make it. That's why they call it natural. But what this report says, or is asking the question in the 90s, are our energy wells causing this swamp gas, the shallow gas, to escape up. It's a very important thing to remember. Our Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, they also studied industrial gas migration. They even titled their paper, Migration of Methane from Energy Wells. They didn't put nature in there as the cause. They looked at 24,000 historic records. Of course, they have much more money than I do. Our regulators in Alberta were involved in this. The precursor to Encana, Pan-Canadian, was involved in this work. And they found even less records had a gas present in the water before oil and gas. They also looked at the methane in water, and they found methane in most of the water wells, but at very, very low levels. If you can try to remember this, this is at, they found levels at less than 0.05 milligrams per liter. That's even less than what the Saskatchewan study found 
1976. There were two water wells. The highest were just over one milligram per liter. I bought my home in 1998. I fell in love with the old historic farmhouse. It's about 100 years old. It's my garden. I love beauty. I love Alberta's big sky, or I'd be living down east. And I love freedom. What I'm finding with the new unconventional oil and gas is that we are fast losing our freedom in this country. Yeah, there's a lot more impacts than just the water. Our Canadian Council of Ministers of the Environment, do any of you know what this is? These are the ministers of environment across the country. They held a very important workshop. We never hear about this in the mainstream media. 2002, this happened. They came out with their report, and they wrote that unconventional drilling poses a real threat to quantity and quality, and that we need baseline hydrogeological investigations to track contaminants. Is this happening anywhere? What's baseline? They should be doing this for at least 10 years before they start drilling. Oops, I'm sorry. I can start doing it. <laughs> and Canada didn't care. They started to use my community, pregnant women and children, as their secret frac test tube in 2001. They didn't tell us. These wells were all fractured above the base of groundwater protection. Remember the blue icing? Remember the fingers saying, oh, we protect that. Oh, don't worry, we're way down there. This is the reality. This is their own data. In 2001, they, they perforated, put holes in that casing that's supposed to protect our water at about 100 meters below the surface. That's insane, in my view. In 2004, they did more and more wells every year. They, they fractured directly into our freshwater aquifers that supply my community. They fracked right into the blue icing. My life began with a lot of noise, lots and lots of noise. They continue to violate my legal right to quiet enjoyment, and it's a big impact to me. My neighbor came to me in 2003 and said, you need um, to get your water well tested because my water well went bad. After in Canada did some nearby wells, I found out years later, those were very shallow. So in Canada came, tested my well, the water appearance was clear. The tester did not report visible gas. Here's the records. Um, again, you can't read it, but when you get this online, you can see the data and it states on it, water appearance clear. Our research council put in writing in a report that natural release of methane from our form coal formations in Alberta is rare. Now remember the shift to blaming nature. They're contradicting themselves. And the reason they need to do the hydraulic fracturing with all the massive machinery is because they have to force that reluctant methane to let go. This is in Canna's data. These are all the holes above the basic groundwater protection that they blasted through the casing that Encana told us would protect the blue icing, our water. 24 perforations that they then fractured. They need these holes in the casing to get their fluids pumped into formation. This was done in secret. Encana knew they were fracturing directly into our freshwater drinking supply because this record was filed at the Alberta groundwater database not the energy regulator for oil or gas. These are six shallow perforations. I can't see my screen here, but um, there's six very shallow right here and down here in Canada says they did this with the intention to frack for cold bed methane, which is what they did. The water wells began to go bad. This one went to sand. This is the shallow in Canada gas well there. There's no time to go through all the other bad things in Canada did with this well, but they did other things. Still to this day, we cannot find out what chemicals were injected. I do not know what I was bathing in. I do not know what I was ingesting or breathing venting out of the taps. The regulators will not compel Encana to disclose this information. We have the best regulations and regulators in the world. 
the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency that just put out their report, preliminary report on what happened at Pavilion, Wyoming, same company, they didn't get the chemicals either. How can you properly fully investigate without the chemical recipes? Finally, in Canada has an open house. They started their experiments in 2001. 2004, they promised us the video, the cupcake video, without the cupcakes, that they would never frack our freshwater drinking supply. They said they would never do such a terrible thing. In fact, they would frack far below the impermeable layers to prevent gas from migrating into our water. The EPA said in their report that they found those promised impermeable layers at Pavilion, Wyoming didn't seem to be so impermeable. And if they're fracking everything, I don't think they're impermeable anymore, even if they started out that way. And when the water wells began to go bad and Canna promised the Rosebud Dinner Theater $150,000, I say to you, say no to the poisoned apple. This is how they divide and conquer communities, in my view. They did a really good job with this. Our water tower blew up in an explosion a few months later. There was an investigation. I just found out about this just recently. That was 2005. Accumulation of gases and sent a worker with serious injuries to hospital. There's the old water tower here. You can just see the concrete. Here's the new one. I don't know many barns. They were trying to make it look agricultural. Red roof, uh, yeah. It doesn't look like a barn to me. And the new reservoir is underground. This cost the community almost $700,000. They're still paying for this to this day. They paid for it. What did they get promised? 150,000. Here's my water after and kind of fracked the aquifer that supplies my well. The government promised safe water for us all because they had not done their jobs. And they promised this now and into the future. The Premier, King Klein, promised whatever was necessary to be done would be done. The government did some preliminary testing and they knew in 2006 they were able to fingerprint the gases, similar type testing they did in the Duke study and also the EPA at Pavilion, Wyoming. They looked at four in Canada gas wells in my community and three water wells. They did not look at any of the gas wells that were fractured less than 200 meters or the ones directly into our water. And still, they found the fingerprints indicated a match to Encana's shallow wells. I found this via freedom of information. They didn't tell. They didn't tell the community. They did not put out a press release and tell the truth. I found out years later, after lots of money, there's the data there. Two different labs came to the same conclusion. Mixture of biogenic and thermogenic gas in the water. And Canada has publicly stated that they are fracking the biogenic gas. Do you remember the historic records? Less than 0.3 for Saskatchewan, less than 0.05 Alberta and Saskatchewan, or that was Alberta. We have 30 to 66. Very dangerous levels of methane. We also have ethane, propane, and butane in some of the wells. Here's my water. I don't do this in the house anymore. Uh, like, I'm a blur because even though I've done it so many times, it is extremely explosive, very noisy, very scary. This is the um, uh, report uh, in the Alberta Research Council. This is a researcher named Dr. Alec Blythe. The yellow here that you can't read, but you'll be able to when you get this file. The Research Council was receiving funding from Encana and Alberta Environment to do groundwater research. You know where this is going, right? Yeah. And coal bed methane. They were retained to review Alberta Environment's incomplete, very shoddy investigations. Encana is the company that did the dirty. That's serious conflict of interest. That's the best in the world. They, of course, found the contamination to be natural. They suggested uh, bacteria to, be, to, to blame, but they couldn't explain where the methane came from. They ignored the historic records. They ignored their own report in 2003. 
that said natural release of methane from coal formations is rare. Lots of other things they did. So our government breaks the promise. They say our water is safe. I don't agree. I have to look at that water tower. This is my home. I have to haul my own water. It's about 45 minutes away where I go to get water. And my little dog, Magic, he always comes with me. I don't ask him. He wants to come. One of the worst things in this, to me, in June of last year, I'm a scientist, so I go back to look at the data all the time. And all the records I had found that said gas present, no, were gone off the government database. And they altered the records. Um, I have learned in this fracking war to save everything as soon as I find, found, find it. The Research Council report from 2003, when I went public with that, it too was removed off the internet. So there's the records I first showed you from 1986. Here's the new records. It doesn't say gas present, no. And nor does it say it there. Best in the world. Just quickly to end with a few photos I took in the last month just before coming here. It's never enough. This is our water reservoir there, the new one. This is another Encana well to be fracked above the basic groundwater protection, just north of my water well. I am at war and I'm now surrounded even more. This is, our, this is the same well from our cemetery. This is another well from the same cemetery. We only have one cemetery. Rosebud's a very small community. This is the well that they directionally drilled just recently under my land. My water well is already too dangerous to have connected to my home. They did this well on an angle and our regulator has publicly declared that angle drilling is a major factor of gas leakage. And their bottom hole location is right next to my water well. There it is there. There's my water well. There's Encana's well. And there's Encana dumping their waste. They call it land spreading. I call it waste dumping. This is agricultural land. They're growing grain. This I watched with a photographer. This truck filled up at the rig that was drilling under my land. And Canna has received downspacing approval to fracture into the fish scale shales, which are reportedly radioactive. It was a very windy day, and both the photographer and I could see the wind making the waste airborne. The community of Rosebud was coming out of the church down in the valley. This is going into the children's lungs. And Canna will not tell me what's in this. I had asked many questions about these wells. The regulator wrote me a letter saying, and Canna will not dump their waste adjacent to your land. They went half a mile over. It's very close too to the runoff into the Rosebud River. And Canna has done research in our national wildlife area at Suffield. They had found in their drilling waste arsenic, mercury, barium, chromium, and more. There's another well. This is my garden shed. I took the photo from my deck. It's just south of my property. Another one to be fracked above the base of groundwater protection. Are they protecting our blue icing? So we have the best. And your government is promising you the most rigorous. We have a competition now. Yeah, what are you going to get?
No, I don't trust anywhere else in Canada but the Maritimes. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, I've presented uh, in New York City twice, three times. Um, University of Lethbridge, University of Alberta. There is a small, com there is a growing group of Albertans, believe it or not, which has given me renewed vigor that are demanding a moratorium. I presented there for their first workshop. Uh, I can't even remember um, here in Nova Scotia. Uh, and um, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. But is, pardon? Have I no, I haven't. I don't think so. I, I have a follow-up question. And yes? The follow-up question is this, is that um, we, we here in the province, we need to engage a tremendous amount of people to resist this. And I, I'm just curious if you have observations in the other demographics where you presented, what techniques and what action they are taking to engage the public in, in this difficulty? We don't have that much time. Challenge. Call it a challenge. This is the greatest challenge that, of our time, but it's also a great opportunity. I see this as the most terrible thing I've ever seen environmentally, but I see it as an incredible opportunity for a positive change. And I see it happening. I don't think you have to make all the people come. The people are coming all, all on their own. I'm seeing it happen when my government began, like there's way more, this story is just a tiny, tiny part. Uh, they did everything to try to silence me. And Albertans were trying, my community wanted the money, so they were being very abusive. And I was very angry, very angry. And I couldn't let my anger go. When I let my anger go, all of a sudden I was getting contacted from all over the world. Then I was asked to present at the United Nations. I couldn't believe it. And it's getting bigger. I just heard yesterday Poland was protesting in the streets, massive protests. The industry's not expecting that. They, they go to the poorest communities, the most hit, hard, hard hit, hit. Rosebud was devastated by drought and hail. Poland, economic hardship, and the people are rising all on their own. And I, I think every person that finds their courage and loses the fear of their own power because we're incredibly powerful, more people want that. So they come. I mean, yes, share it with family, friends, talk about it. I talk about it all the time because I think there's nothing more important. I think you can, like, I feel that you have a pressure that you need to get everyone to know what's happening. Uh, somebody told me, um, CBC had on the radio at one point that one of the most searched words on the internet was hydraulic fracturing. That tells us everything we need to know. Yeah? Uh, more on the negative side. You work in the industry, I work in the industry. Yeah. Uh, I still work in the industry. You? Yeah, not much. I still get a little bit. Courageous companies. Yeah, I agree. Yep. What do I think about that? Yeah, um, I disagree that this is just the beginning. This has been going on for some Americans for decades. There are communities that have been living with bad water for a long time. For me, it's almost 10 years. For you, it might be beginning here, but you have information we did not have. You have already a massive army that us in the West had nothing of because we had none of this information. Information is power. Share it. The more you share the information and your truth, the less ugly it will be. And I actually see already the ugly is changing. My anger changed. And now I see this case and what happened to me 
has been the most incredible lesson of my life to show me how powerful I am. And I'm ordinary. We have amazing power. And they're really, they're really afraid of it. I think the global momentum will, will prevent things from getting ugly. Our politicians are starting to get scared. If you want to make it ugly, I think you lose. I really do. Because our prime minister and our politicians are taking our rights away, right, left, and center. Uh, we have to remain strong within the law, peaceful. Uh, do you, did you guys all see the pepper spraying down at the university in the States? Or those kids, that was an incredible lesson for everybody because they tried to enrage them and make them act out. And those men backed off in shame. Yeah. That's what you want to do. And when you get the urge to be violent, have a cascade list for your communities where the strong sort of silent types, you know, the ones that never really say much, but they're real strong pillars. They can be really valuable assets that people can phone if they're so angry they don't know what to do with themselves. I have my little dog. He helps. Well, but, but it's really important, and you must have the compassion for the people who lose their temper and the people who sign the leases because it's your community they want to destroy. I used to think the water was the worst loss. And just this last year, I realized that it is a very little loss. It is the destroyed communities. The people don't trust each other. They want money over people suffering. But have compassion for that. And trust your community to say, I'm, I'm losing it. And I need help to, to bring back my power. You are, we, we, we are more powerful when we stay away from the violence. And even the anger. Sometimes it's good to get angry, because that can motivate. But I've experienced it in myself. The more calm I am, the power is phenomenal. And you, your community will grow in power with every person that lets the anger go. What, what are some of the tactics that the, the industry has used against you? <laughs> well, Just they... Give us an idea of what okay. the sort of thing that uh, people like you have to face. Uh, and, um, yeah, maybe some or just... Intimidation, fear. We're all afraid. Specific? Okay, well, they, viol they infringed upon my charter rights. They sent me a, a very nasty letter when I presented the regulator with evidence of non-compliance. They sent a letter to me banishing me from energy regulation. They were trying to get me to act out and get violent so they could throw me in jail or discredit me or ridicule me. But they also were trying, I believe, to make me go away, to become a good, obedient Alberta woman. Sit down, be quiet. It made me really angry. Uh, I come, I mean, uh, our rights are important. Well, and we're, they you at the press, for example? Oh, they call me insane. They sent the RCMP after the W5 did a small segment on my story in 2009. The very next Monday, the RCMP came and my lawyers had told them, we will come to you. We will cooperate fully. We'll do whatever we can to help you. The police lied to me. They told me they wanted me to use my expertise with landowners and environment to train their officers. It wasn't that at all. They were trying to intimidate me into going silent. And um, they rejected our offers of cooperation. I had every right to go violent, right? I had every right to really get angry. And well, no, but I, uh, it was very hard, and I was, when, when you get afraid, they showed up at my home. And I told them, no, you're not coming here. That's, that in, instills fear. And when, and I live alone, I have just a little dog, he's not even a big fierce dog. I was really afraid, and when we're afraid, anger comes out if we don't resolve the fear. But I decided to, to talk to them. Um, that's one of the things. I expect there will be many more things. They keep trying to 
uh, discredit me, get me angry. Um, yeah. That's the ugly, the RCMP? Yeah, no, like the intimidation factor. Yeah, it's really ugly. I, I can't believe this, this is... Why, this is what I meant by ugly. Yeah, I cannot believe this happened to me in Canada. I cannot believe it. I still, to this day... They also sent one of their lawyers, a great big bully of a guy, to do McCarthy-like red baiting. I was even more terrified than when the police came. He tried to get me to admit to crimes I had never committed. And I'm one of the most boring Canadians there is. Like, I live this really quiet little life. And uh, he tried to find out what it would take to get me to leave Alberta. And I think we can get really fierce with watch animal behavior. Like, you know, the birds and the dogs do the scruff on there. So I, I did this and I said, you do your jobs and I will gladly leave Alberta and never come back. Well, they haven't done their job yet, so I'm still there. But they're, they're, the fear, the intimidation, oh, and I tell you about the police, if they come, because they will come, don't let them in. I think with me, in some of my presentations, I've act, I took photos of the police when they came, and just this year, I have gone public with those photos. I waited all these years, but I felt people need to have this information and don't let them in. Talk to them outside. Uh, ask them if they have a warrant. Try to breathe really deep and, and contain your fear. I mean, my heart was pounding. I, you know when you get when you can hardly hear because of the pressure? I was really afraid. I wasn't afraid for me. I was afraid for all those files I had saved and backed up that had vanished off the internet. And um, I had a suspicion when they began calling me, so I got a really good hard drive, a backup drive, backed up everything, all my computers, and I took it off-site. Because my fear was losing the information for you guys, for everybody. About <laughs> four years ago at this time, I was at a small workshop with Dr. Marta Costa, before she passed yeah. in Ottawa. Yeah. And uh, she admitted in our little workshop Oh yeah. The RCMP attend. Yeah. My question, my question has to do with, as a scientist. Okay. My question has to do with the science field. Uh, you mentioned, I think, the best regulation in the world, you know, in Alberta, you know, the type thing. Uh, that, no, the, be careful. That's what they tell us. Yeah. They've been madly deregulating to prepare for the new hydraulic fracturing we to come. We, we have the best. No, no, it's a fight. We're going to arm wrestle later outside. <laughs> but. Yeah. They, the, uh, the politicians are putting out bullshit on their ankle, uh, yeah. saying that yeah. they're going to come up with the best regime in yeah. the world. They're going yeah. to do that. Yeah. Now, as a scientist, as a scientist, how do you, what, what do you see with that? I used to believe that this could be a great answer to us running out of oil and gas. I no longer believe that. I started to change my view in about spring. I think the, the, the good stuff is all gone. The explosion in the Gulf is a good example. We're after the dregs for the tight oil and the tight shale, gas, other formations, tight sand, coal bed methane. They're going to frack it all. They want to frack it all. I believe everywhere they go, like the Halliburton loophole in America, they're madly deregulating in Alberta. Uh, industry has gone to Poland. They, I believe they want to use the poverty in Poland to crack the EU because countries in the EU are beginning to, they're, they're talking EU ban, right? So they said to Poland, we will bring you the jobs and the prosperity, but you have really good legislation to protect your very scarce groundwater, so you've got to get rid of that. What does that tell you? They know they cannot do this without contaminating water. The regulator in Alberta, the government in Alberta, on top of all this horrible stuff, they brought in very bad legislation. Uh, my University of Lethbridge presentation is on the internet, and um, there's a link to it. It's pretty big, but it has all the individual bills and the rights they took away. One of the rights is 
they took away our access to the courts. And the minister behind closed doors can be judge, jury, and executioner and decide if we should go to jail or not without access to the courts, if we want to protest something. That's ugly, right? Independent, fierce, redneck Albertans, are they going to want that? They didn't say much when the law was passed. They also took away our right to our pore space, the space between the formations underground. And they're putting the liability for carbon sequestration, the CCS, but they're, they're not really using to get rid of pollution. Alberta just gave industry two billion of our dollars. That's just Alberta. But they're not using it for pollution uh, control. They're using it to enhance oil recovery. And removing the pore space, the government has taken ownership of that. Companies would otherwise have had to pay the landowner to store uh, the CO2 under our ground. And this bill also puts the liability of gas migration from industry onto the landowner. It's very smart. You have to admire their cunning. Admire it, learn from it. Use the same cunning. And those promises you guys are getting, when I read the headlines, I laughed. This industry, as you had said, yeah, they're hard-headed, but something, I, I, I've worked with this industry for 30 years. There are good companies, there's good people working there. Um, what I saw, though, with these experiments in Alberta was something I had never seen before. A ruthless arrogance, a ruthless cruelty. Uh, they've gone way too far this time. Yeah? I think more people in New Brunswick are uh, trust people and are honest like everywhere else. Uh, at what point in your journey did you find you had to believe that you were being lied to and um, you were dishonest and I believed the government when they promised us what happened in America would not happen in Alberta. I believed them. I work in the patch and in Canada was drilling and fracking all around and I missed everything. I was busy. Um, when did it start? When I, uh, there's a longer presentation that I do. It was about August 2004 that I caught in Canada's land manager lying to me very seriously, and I was on a contract for Encana, and I made the decision to resign. And then everybody said, oh, the, the energy regulator will do the right thing. Well, they just abused me and lied. And then Alberta Environment did the same thing. The politicians lied. We're at the end. We're running out of the good oil and gas, and our governments are too cowardly to tell us.